all the reports I've been hearing out of the White House um, is the president is running around screaming at television sets. He's increasingly isolated. He's basically wanting to fire everybody. But Kushner, who is also now uh, shooting at all the staff members, who is behind the right. firing of Director Comey, um, reportedly. So now Kushner and Trump are aligned against everybody else, blaming everybody else for the firing of Comey when it was Trump that fired Comey and Kushner who supported firing Comey. Um, he's even at his club, reports at his club that he's, he's going off detached, almost detached from reality. And then you have, and, and I, you have the ambassador of the United Nations calling him the CEO of the country, fundamentally ignorant fundamentally ignorant of our constitutional republic and the constitution, the system that's been put in place. And Rex Tillerson cowering like he's a caddy, uh, saying he's, quote, devoted to the president, cowering like a poor, pathetic, uh, I can't say caddy because most caddies like will talk back to you. Perhaps I, ballet I, is the word you're looking for. I don't know what word I'm looking for, but it's sad and pathetic that the Secretary of, the, of, of State feels like he has to say that he's, quote, devoted to a president who is, again, shredding uh, democratic norms. We need to get to every Clapper. day. Yeah, there's so many things uh, about this weekend that stand out, but it's, first of all, it's awfully early for a president and his staff to be circling the wagons like this. The idea that we may be on the cusp of 2.0, uh, what would be interesting about that is then there's no one left to blame. In a funny sort of way, after 125 days, if you have an entirely new team and things don't get better, then what? Because the one constant there will be the president and one or two then uh, you know, staffers like Jared Kushner. So in an ironic sort of way, it puts more pressure on him to get it right on 2.0 because uh, if it doesn't work the second time around, then what do you do? But, but, but Michael Schmidt, the remarkable thing is Donald Trump is screaming at all of his staff members for things that he has done unilaterally. I forget exactly who wrote this. Maybe it was in the Times or the Post, but it's like a pilot that decides to turn towards turbulence and then blames the crew for the cra for for passengers being bumped around sh bumped around what what well, i found it, what they, i found fascinating again profoundly ignorant by the president of the united states again none of these people actually have any understanding of how this constitutional republic works the president saying he would have no problem ordering a loyalty oath from an fbi director that is the talk of an autocrat and what are you hearing did he do that yeah, I mean, basically, he clearly didn't understand Comey, because if he saw what Comey did before the election, he had to understand that Comey really didn't care what a lot of people thought about him. So if the president was going to come to him and say, hey, you know, do you want a loyalty? Of course Comey wasn't going to go along with that. And he comes back to it and comes back to it. And I think that really colored the way that both of them saw each other in the months that, that came forward. But the idea that their relationship was going to work, like it was never going to work. Comey was never going to ever do the things that Trump wanted him to do. But the thing that I don't understand is that why does Trump fire Comey in the fashion that he did? If there's nothing to hide on the Russia investigation, all this does is just ratchet up the pressure and attention and raise questions. Why did he do this? And especially in the fashion that he did. He, you know, he, he did it because he knew that he was ex going to expand the investigation and he figured to take the hit as bad as that hit was going to be, than have this independent actor in there. He's trying to get elected Republican officials in to replace him with the FBI. An idea so preposterous that even Lindsey Graham said no. Yeah, I mean, you've yeah. got the, we've seen on, on various issues with Trump in the past, you know, you can say various things about how he makes decisions, and sometimes is uh, impetuous, but on things like his tax returns, for instance, he clearly, over the course of a year, made a very a, a highly rational calculation. The political pain that I will suffer 
in not releasing my tax returns is obviously less than the pain I would suffer if I released them. Right. Because there's bad stuff in them. Right? Same that's, thing here. It's the same thing that's going on here. He's taking a lot of incoming now, and I think whatever people say about him being detached from reality, he recognizes that he's, he knew he was going to take a lot, of, a lot of heat for this, but he clearly has decided that the heat he's taking now is less than what would happen if there's a full bore independent investigation with James Comey asking for more resources, asking for more prosecutors, trying to get to the bottom of what this Russia connection is. And that's the one place where I think we can't dismiss Trump as being wholly irrational. He's making calculated decisions right I'm now. Sure I, don't, about I'm, I, I don't think that I agree with John. I don't think that was an irrational decision. Everybody all weekends. Why did he do it? What he knew he said he did it because he understand he understood that Comey was on to something. I'm not gonna blow the end of billions for anybody, <laughs> but I will don't. just say You're one really of the last scenes, that. Axelrod talks about pulling a string. Right. Well guess what? The FBI has started pulling that string. And Trump's helped and, and, and they're they're still pulling that string by running and where his mouth. it leads is not just an election issue. It is a criminal issue, and Trump knows that. I'm not sure. I, I, I would say that there is some evidence that it was a miscalculation, because you recall uh, when the firing came out, they had press releases kind of ready to go with quotes from Democrats saying how bad Comey was, you know, as if that would be this big right. pivotal thing. But, but they, and but they, they clearly misunderstood. Notice, oh, I know. I'm just saying they, it, was so a, it wasn't it was a, like it was calculated. But, well, let, let's also be clear. Though. I'm not trying to say that it was not a miscalculation. And it's not to say that they didn't. They obviously misread Democrats in Congress. I'm just trying to make the point that I think that Trump is the reason he did this was not because he's out of his mind. He did this because, as you say, Joe, I think he recognized, he looked over at the FBI and said, this guy, James Comey, who came to the White House, I asked him if we believed this story, I asked him for his loyalty. He wouldn't give me his loyalty. Now he's investigating, he has been since last July. He's now taking daily briefings on this matter rather than weekly. He's now asking for more prosecutors. Donald Trump knows what the, what's at the heart of this. I don't know what that is, but he does, and he's saying, <laughs> This guy, Again, this guy another, knows too. Another scene from the end of Billions. I know what that string is, and I'm going to pull on that string. I don't know what that string is. He says, I don't know. But I don't see, know what it is, but so I'm going to find out what it the, is. For the people who have seen Billions, I don't mean to get into it, but there is this final scene where he says, I don't know what the string is, but you do, right. and I'm going to find it. Well, here's the, here's the rub. With the FBI, they've already found the string, yeah. and they're pulling on it. Based on my contacts inside the FBI, and they're starting to tug on that All string. Right. And they're going to keep tugging. And they're going to keep going. going. And it's accelerated because of the way he fired Comey. Bigger he knows it. picture, though, there's a lot of damage being done to For our sure. country. No, oh, oh, no, there, there is, and the FBI is it's on not to it. But so many of these comments just strike okay me when you're getting at is Nobody's sure. saying it's going to be okay, Mika. Okay. Okay. In fact, this is a constitutional crisis, which is why we said this is a constitutional we, crisis. We are a country at the end of the day of distributed power. You have separate institutions and you have separate independent power bases in the government and outside the government. That's what checks and balances are about. And what you sense is an administration that viscerally has difficulties with that. They want concentrated the power and there's a, there's a friction that's, in, that's every day getting stronger and stronger between their worldview and the American political tradition. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Playing this is that. a guy who ran a small family company for his entire life, and he thinks that is how the government should run. It is not. Yeah. And Nikki Haley thinks the UN damage. ambassador, who's a governor, thinks oh, he's Lord. just a CEO of I can't. business. Um, how ignorant. He's doing she served in government for how long, Mika? And she thinks that the president's the same as the CEO. How completely ignorant can you be? of our constitution, of our history, of our republic. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.